Yo guys, what's going on? It's Shane and today I'm going to show you how to use pretty much any smart home device with Apple HomeKit and Siri. So to get this working, we are going to be using some software called HomeBridge and it's basically a translation layer that lets Apple HomeKit uh, communicate with other devices that are not HomeKit certified. Um, in order to use it though, you will need a Linux computer that is on your network uh, and on all the time. Um, I will be using a Raspberry Pi for this tutorial. Um, however, you could use like um, a Debian VM um, or just an old computer you have lying around. I highly recommend these though, because they are cheap. Um, you can get them from anywhere from like 50 to $80 and they don't pull a lot of power. Um, I am gonna assume that you have already flashed an operating system on here um, before we get started on the tutorial. Um, if you haven't though, I will link a video down below showing you how to install uh, Raspbian on here and get everything sorted. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump over to the computer and we'll get it installed. All right guys, so in the description, I'll have a link over to this GitHub page. This basically gives you a written install guide on how to install HomeBridge on uh, Raspbian, which is the operating system that I have installed um, on my Raspberry Pi. Um, so we'll go ahead and go through this guide, get it installed super easy. Um, so first what you wanna do is you wanna make sure you have SSH access to your Raspberry Pi. Um, I would go ahead and just use um, Windows Terminal, but you can use uh, CMD, PuTTY, whichever you wanna use. Um, so I'll go ahead and open up my terminal uh, and I'll just SSH. Uh, the username by default is Pi, um, and then the IP is gonna be at Raspberry. Or if you know the IP address of your uh, Raspberry Pi, you can type that in as well. My apologies, it was Raspberry Pi. And then once you're logged in, um, you'll see this page. I'm just gonna go ahead and clear this out. We'll go ahead and use that later. Um, but first we wanna switch back over to the install guide. Um, so you will need Node.js installed. I already have it installed on this uh, Raspberry Pi because I run some uh, Discord bots, stuff like that on it. Um, but what you would do is you would just copy this line right here and paste it in. You can right click. Um, it'll have me confirm. And then basically it'll add this as a source. Um, and then you're able to install the necessary files. You'll copy this, go back, paste it in. Um, once you do that, you should be able to check if Node is installed by just doing Node-V. Um, as you can see, I'm on the latest version at the time of filming this video, so we are all good. And then what we'll just need to do next is we'll need to install the HomeBridge um, and the HomeBridge UI. So we'll just copy this. You can click this button right here. And then we will go ahead and paste this in right here and wait for that to finish. It should automatically uh, press enter for you. So as soon as that's uh, pasted, we just have to wait for the install. Um, depending on the speed of your micro SD card or the computer you're using, if you're not using Raspberry Pi, um, this can take a little bit. Um, so we'll just go ahead and wait for this to finish. All right, perfect. So that took a couple minutes, but that is now officially installed. Um, you might get this alert down here if you're out of, outdated on your NPM install. I am, um, but if you install just normally, um, you shouldn't get this. However, it's not going to affect the actual install. Um, now that we've done that, what we can do is we can go back here and then copy this command right here. This will set it up as a service and make sure it starts um, when the Raspberry Pi comes online. And perfect. So now HomeBridge is installed. We can access it uh, by reaching the IP address of our Raspberry Pi at port 8581. So what I'll go ahead and do is just uh, control click on this. This will go ahead and open it up. I am gonna switch it over here real quick to make sure we're on the right browser. Um, and then by default, the password and username are gonna be admin. So we'll do admin and admin. And we are officially logged in. So first things first, what I am gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and change the password. So if we click on this button up here and do user accounts, um, administrator click on edit, and then you're able to create a new password. I'm gonna go ahead and click save and that will update our login. All right, so now that we've changed the password and we have HomeBridge installed, we can go ahead and get it configured to work with our smart home devices. I use the TP-Link uh, Casa smart devices, so I have two light bulbs and I have a smart plug as well. So what you can do is once this pulls up, just go ahead and go to the plugin section and you'll see there's an option where you can search for plugins to install. So I'll just go ahead and search TP-Link. And there's a couple different options. So this one's for the uh, HS100 light bulbs, the Tapo devices. Um, however, this one's showing up as verified. I would always recommend installing the verified ones uh, just because they have a little bit more guarantee to work. Um, and this is for the TP-Link smart home. So I'll just go ahead and click on this install button right here. And this will go ahead and install this plugin to let it work with our devices. This can take a few minutes just depending on how big the package is, um, but it shouldn't take too long. All right, perfect. And now it's installed. It will give you some additional options to configure stuff how to work. 
Um, you don't have to change these, but if you run into issues, you might want to look at the configuration um, and just kind of see what options come up. I'm going to go ahead and just click save just because it should work by default for most items. Now that we've done that, we'll just go ahead and go back to the home bridge main page and you'll see this QR code on the screen. We're going to scan this into the home app and that'll actually give us access uh, to the home bridge and get it all paired. So I'm going to go ahead and show my phone up on the screen and you guys will be able to see um, how to get it set up. So once you open up the home app, you should see this little message. Go ahead and click continue. And then as you can see, there's an option where we can add an accessory. You'll go ahead and tap on that and it'll open up the camera. We'll just scan that QR code and it'll show up as a bridge. We'll go ahead and click add to home. It'll let you know that it's uncertified. We're going to go ahead and add it anyway. And then once it connects, it'll ask us some questions. So it'll ask for the location. I'm going to go ahead and mark bedroom because that's where I have my home bridge uh, set up. And it's going to ask for a name. Uh, this is the default name that it gives. I'm just going to go ahead and just change the name to home bridge. You can leave it, change it, whatever you want to do. And it's going to show that it's been added to the home. So we'll go ahead and click done. And now that we've done that, it is connected, but we have to go ahead and get our devices detected. So now that we've done that, if we go ahead and click on this restart button up in the top, it'll go ahead and restart the service as well as the UI and it'll take us back to the page. This is just going to make it so that that plugin we installed um, activates and detects all the devices on the network. And perfect. So the server restarted. As you can see, there's a bunch of commands that just came through from the uh, Homebridge TP-Link smart home. So it's given us some warnings uh, just depending on the devices. But if I go ahead and check my home, as you can see, it's been updated. So I have my bedroom fan and my bedroom plug. I do have an additional light as well, but that one's unplugged currently, so it's not going to show up. Um, but I can just tap on these and it'll uh, start controlling them. So for example, the plug um, actually controls this light that's right above me. So if I go ahead and tap on that, as you can see, the light turns off. And if I tap it again, it'll bring it back up. So now you're able to control pretty much any smart home device that you have directly through Apple HomeKit. You can set up routines, automation, scenes, um, as well as use Siri to control your lights. So it makes it super easy, awesome to set up, and uh, it just makes it really convenient so that way you don't have to go into different apps to control anything uh, that's set up in your house. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. I hope this helped you guys get your smart home set up. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave a comment down below if you run into anything. And if you enjoyed the video and it helped you, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Anyway, guys, this is Shane, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.